it is not a technical session so you you will have your own uh, views you will have your own opinions that you can really share with us i mean with me too and i can really moderate the same and uh, we will come to a conclusion probably you know it is it is quite debatable so you can be able to turn on the mic and uh, you know you can present your views too so i prefer to have such a session probably since uh, you know i am i'm i'm from a corporate training uh, you know area so i i believe that you know you you have a lot of things in your mind you have a lot of inputs in your mind you have got a content in your mind so you can very well turn on your mic and you can you know, you can fire your uh, what is that your opinions and suggestions all right yo yeah now i i will i will share my screen one second please okay one second uh hope it is uh, clear right now can anyone please turn on your mic and speak now yes is it clear yes sir it's clear all right thank you thank you thank you so this is our topic the holistic approach towards successful academics incorporating values and ethics in the present scenario you know how we can mix these values and technical education uh, you know uh, in connection so that uh, so that they, they can be placed well all right so you know to start with i will i will start with the quote of uh, our father of nation uh, mk gandhi mohandas karamchand gandhi so according to the father of our nation you know uh, mk gandhi if if wealth is lost nothing is lost he says that wealth is lost nothing nothing is lost if health is lost something is lost he believed that if health is we are losing the health probably something will be lost and if the character is lost everything is lost so i think uh, you know best of all things is actually the character and i, I will map this particular terminology that is a character into values i would say you know values so what is this value you know values are something that teaches us good virtues including honesty truthfulness kindness integrity and a lot more you know we have got you know when we are coming to uh, you can just replicate the word like into you know ethics too we can term it as ethics too one second please one second please i have got a connection error one second please sorry for the trouble uh yeah i, I will share it again yeah so, uh, so a lot of things are there when we are coming to values as well as uh, ethics so uh, you know how much it's important to have some values in our lives probably our candidates life our students life yes i i think i will start with a story you know uh, you know i think uh, hearing a story is always welcomed by almost all the age, age groups i must say including kids as well as you know you know great academicians like you people so you know once a well known speaker uh, he, he was a magician too and he was a you know he is a well known speaker and he started off his uh, seminar or training session by holding up a you know 200 rupee note yeah he 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 is having some 200 rupee note in his hand uh, and in the session he asked everyone you know who would like to have this money you know who would like to have this uh, this 200 rupees note yeah so hands started going up everyone actually you know you know raised their hands properly yeah he said now i am going to give this 200 rupee note uh, you know but i will do something to something to this particular uh, you know currency note let me do this then he proceeded and he he just crushed the the you know currency note he just crumpled up this this currency note and he then again asked every, everyone you know who still wants it Still, you know, the hands were up in the air. Everyone were uh, really raising their hands. You know, then he he replied again. Now I'm going to do some something more to this currency note, and still I, I would like to know the reply. And he dropped it on the ground, and uh, he started to grind it with his uh, shoes, uh, and he picked it up, and now again crumpled and crushed, and he again asked everyone, "Now who still wants it? Who still wants it?" you know still the hands were up on the up on the air and everyone was actually uh, you know in need of that uh, 200 rupee note so so my friends the thing is that you know we the thing is it's quite clear you know even though something has happened to that particular currency note still uh, the value is not being loosened yeah we are not losing its value probably 
So it, it is not actually decreasing the value. It is still worth 200 rupees. So I must say that, uh, you know, many a times the, the, the student life, the academician's life, we are sometimes dropped, we are sometimes crumpled, uh, and sometimes we will be in trouble and we will be facing a number of circumstances that come our way. But, uh, but the thing is that, you know, the value won't be lost. You will never lose your value probably. Uh, so you are always special, I must say. At the same time, I would like to remind you one more thing that uh, the candidates that, that, that come in front of us for our sessions, for our, for our academics, for, in our college, in our school, probably they are also, they are also very special and uh, obviously we people are valuing them the most. See, students are always uh, taught to be very desirous. So since, uh, uh, since you all come from, uh, you know, academician background as well as the teaching background, we will have to, we will have to clearly discuss on uh, the value system that has been happening all around the world as well as our country and in our state, obviously. So we will have to speak on that. So the students are always taught to be very desirous. And once I was just going through the uh, courts of uh, Gautam Putta and he was telling that desire is the root cause of evilness. Oh my God. And so it is quite contradictory, you know. Uh, you know, when a person is very desirous, sometimes he will be, uh, sometimes he will be very selfish. Sometimes he will, uh, he will find some crooked ways. Sometimes he will uh, find some faulty ways to, to achieve uh, his aim probably. So why it's difficult to inculcate values in education? When especially coming uh, when it is coming to the technical education, see probably uh, the problem. It's not a uh, not at all a problem actually. But when we are thinking about the technical education, you know we don't have uh, anything to speak in our classroom sessions uh, regarding uh, uh, the values, the the you know social the social aspects, the the cultural differences and all. Since we have a lot to speak about the technical uh, technical things as well as the technical backgrounds, technical theories and all. So we don't have much uh, time. We won't be getting much time to speak on such things. So I, I always uh, think about the same thing. So if you are taking a session for one hour, probably, if you are getting a chance to speak on the society, speak on the values, speak on the ethics, the professional ethics that we will have to follow, uh, the, the, say, the compassion, the generosity, etc. If, if you are getting some time in your technical session, if you are getting around 10 minutes to speak on such things, I think that would be a great thing. Probably you will be able to, uh, you know, build some rapport with them too. So I think uh, when dealing with, you know, certain subjects like sociology, psychology, etc., they have enough time to speak about people, human being, human values, like generosity, etc. So, you know, we, since we are from the technical background, we, we will be failing. Sometimes we will be failing to uh, do such things probably. If you, are, if you can find some time for the same, probably that will be a great achievement when we are uh, when we are considering the you know the, the human value system probably yeah so uh, so that's that's the introduction part that's the introduction part so that is the scenario that's the scenario so why 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 human values are quite important you know nowadays we are not speaking much about we are not discussing or debating on this human value system since uh, uh, we have found it you know uh, sometimes at some point uh, of education we have found it quite irrelevant to speak about the human values as well as professional ethics but i think some of some of the universities are uh, act, are actually adopting uh, these professional ethics schools in their uh, uh, probably in their curriculum but uh, i think uh, you know that is that is uh, dealt with the least important since uh, uh, you know we are not giving much importance for the same since we have a lot to speak on the other things we have to speak, we have a lot to speak about aim we have to speak about you know a lot about the placements you know entrepreneurship and a lot more so why these human values are important? You know, I, I, I think I can very well, uh, you know, clearly explain the same with you. If you have anything, uh, you know, any points to add with mine, probably you can very well, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, distract me probably, and you can very well turn on your mic and speak in between. Yeah. So why why this uh, this thing is very important? You know, I have I have spotted the first point like, uh, you know, value education is always essential to shape one's life. And to give one an opportunity of performing on the global stage. Why so? You know, the thing is that when a person is actually sticking on to a value system or he's having a, a set of uh, unwritten rules in his mind, when he is having some professional ethics in his mind, when he is quite compassionate with everyone, when he is, uh, you know, showing some companionship with everyone, you know, against the caste, creed, color, uh, and every other, you know, you know, systems, etc. You know, the thing is that they will be in a straight line. Probably they won't get really diverted to uh, some other things. Probably so they won't have any sort of confusion. 
So why this value is being much connected with the career or goal, probably? You know, uh, when uh, when when we are considering the when the, when we are considering the life of uh, a student or a boy, when he is in his adolescence or when he is in the when he is doing his higher education, probably, uh, you know, he he is having some a lot of confusions about uh, uh, the value system, the ethics, and all. So you know, he is very much confused and he is very much frustrated. So I think he is getting diverted from everything. You know, I mean, since uh, he is having a lot of peer pressure too, probably he is getting diverted, and uh, sometimes he is failing to uh, set up his goal as well as uh, sometimes he is failing to uh, set his dream ambition as well as the goal. So I think I think some 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 deviating element is there when he when the person is not imparted with proper value system, probably he is getting deviated to some other points. He is actually you know undergoing a trial and error process. He will be trying everything. Yeah, he he will be trying everything. And he will be experienced everything since he doesn't have an experience prior to that. He doesn't have anybody to speak about that. So you know, since he is quite uh, you know under confusion, probably he will be diverted, or uh, sometimes he, he will get deviated, and he may move to some other some other obviously some some things like you know uh, you know I don't really prefer you know people you know small kids going for uh, job and all probably some you know in Kerala I could I could really see that. Multi-level marketing firms are there. You know, catering firms are there. They are using these kids. I mean, this adolescent, adolescent students for uh, their purposes probably. So they are earning some money, and some are moving on to real estate. Since uh, you know he is lacking this value system, probably he will be moving for some easy money, and he will be moving on for some uh, what is that? You know, easy money like thing. You know, some business like the MLMs or probably real estate, and he will be selling something. So, so I think th this is in coordination with the other thing. So I think that this uh, the the orientation or one's goal or one's ambition is much connected with uh, his his value system probably whether it may be from the college or whether it is the value system that he has got from the academics or even religion probably he is get, he, he if he is having some oscillation in his mind probably he cannot get deviated from the uh, core orientation or core call in his life properly so that's the that's the first point the second point is that the need for value education among the parents children and i mean children as well as teachers i think these three are the major pillars probably you know uh, when we are considering the success triangle and or when then we can see that one part is actually from the parents and the middle part that is uh, the children you know our kids our you know our wards probably and the third part is actually the teachers you know uh, the the why why it is quite alarming is that the problem is that we could see a, a number of behavioral disorders and violent activity activities, uh, you know, that is coming over uh, from the student fraternity probably, and there is a lack of unity in the society. So, so, so why some value, you know, discrepancies are, are happening when we are giving them exposure? Probably, you know, a lot of freedom are being given to these kids right now. You know, they are they are given this uh, this mobile phone, they are given these laptops. Probably, they are free to move, they can roam, they can travel. You know, a lot of freedom are there. You know, in the freedom aspect, we are quite liberal nowadays. But when we are giving them freedom, we, we you know we should always make sure that they know the they know the things that is happening all around the world probably you know they, we sh they should be aware of the things you know for example you know if one college is actually uh, quite liberal uh, in the aspect that he can really mingle with the girls yes okay that's quite fine you know that's quite fine to mingle with the girls and to have an association with them to have uh, some collaborative projects works with them probably that's quite good but the other side is that we should also teach them to uh, respect them uh, respect them probably respect girls and how to how to treat them with respect so uh, when we are giving them freedom when we are giving them exposure probably when we are letting them move around when we are letting them uh, you know go for movies or anything else when we are letting them use our laptops our high end uh, you know gadgets and all probably the, the other part is that we should make sure that these people are uh, really aware of the uh, you know facts that is happening all around the world and they should always uh, taught to deal with every situation with much ease and uh, you know much generosity probably so so that's the that's the thing so these two things should be 
carried out, uh, you know, unanimously probably syn a synchronization process should be carried out in this aspect, yes. So the third point is that value education enables us to understand our needs and visualize our thoughts. You know, that is actually a replication or uh, it is actually a replication of uh, the first point that we were speaking on, you know, values. The thing is that uh, when we are, uh, since I'm, I'm working in the capacity of a placement officer uh, in one of the colleges in Kerala, see, I could see that, you know, a person who is a student who is really good in uh, in a technology or when he is really good in coding sometimes he may be lacking uh, good skills in uh, what is that in the interpersonal skills probably sometimes he he really failed to build rapports uh, sometimes he will be failing to socialize with others he is not able to communicate with them you know he was he is having some shy nature uh, you know he he does not have uh, the nature of trusting somebody yeah he does not uh, rely anyone you know he is having a prejudice prejudice nature probably in his mind so i think you know such kind of input if we are giving to these guys probably they can they can also you know move much towards the uh, uh, you know real thing i think the formation of the student i mean uh, when when he when he's getting placed probably he should have two different skills one skill is nothing but he should be very good in the technology and the second skill probably uh, he should be well enough to communicate with them he should be well enough to motivate others he should be very sincere he should be very hard working and he should he should tackle the situation in the in the best way probably so Th that things should be also important to these kids. Yeah. The fourth point, it also helps remove our confusions and contradictions and uh, enable us to rightly utilize the technological innovation. So that is all about sustainable engineering, I would say. You know, uh, why he is using such thing? You know, if, if he, is, uh, he is finding something or he is having some, uh, what is that, innovation in his hand, uh, in his hand, probably in the final year of his uh, uh, college life. You know how how can he really match this particular innovation with the society's requirement yeah uh, with the society's requirement whether there is any shortfalls in them you know whether there is any faults happening in that you know sometimes uh, sometimes some uh, technologies will would be used by i mean would be in the wrong hand so what all things could be done in order to you know so the whole system the whole things i think that should be built uh, with the foundation stone laid in the field of value system as well as ethics i must say so so that the sustainable engineering will be there you know sustainability will be there the almost all the innovation that could be used for the well-being of the society as well as the people common people probably sometimes he can really you know march towards his victory uh, through forming a particular uh, what is that a god uh, you know uh, say hardworking mentality will be there so in multi-level I, I think that this particular base if we are giving to these kids probably in multi-level we can uh, build a particular situation in such a way that that would be quite ideal for the kids to work with i think that that matters a lot I, I i used to speak about this attitude of the kids you know whenever i'm you know speaking about uh, placements and or some you know they have got some uh, some something in their mind about their attitude. so uh, i used to hear this particular word you know whenever i'm contacting some uh, you know placement drives or recruitment or interviews in some colleges probably the employers used to tell me sir i need i don't want uh, you know a person who is really perfect in academics probably but in, i need the person with the right attitude yes attitude yeah attitude building so what is this attitude probably uh, th this attitude is something that what we think how we feel and uh, how we think how we lead our life and uh, how we collaborate with others and how we deal our situations everything so i think nowadays the uh, this problem exists in in most of the education institutions since uh, we could see that they are coming out with good marks with good academics they are having a superb marks you know they would be well enough in coding but at the same time they are not really good in a, you know attitude properly they are not really hard working sometimes they will find some easy way to you know overcome the situation uh, i think i think this can be inculcated this value if we are uh, you know building this particular system probably that could be uh, rectified even so we will be talking in the, you know since this is quite theoretical probably we will be going into detail and we will be uh, we will be speaking on each and every aspects probably what what are the practical things that could be implemented so that uh, you know they can be in the in the good track yeah all right so that's the that's the point that i really want to express to you people so uh, the, the next point is that uh, you know just for your information just we will we will define uh, the the types of the values i would say that is intrinsic values as well as extrinsic value 
you know intrinsic value is uh, you know something uh, which are inbuilt in every human being yeah it is inbuilt in every human being and it gets said that those are the values that a human being uh, has to do with the genes of the parents probably you know i don't know the technical version of that particular thing but obviously we will have some traits of our father our mom yeah so a value system is there inbuilt in our mind you know i was i was just thinking about my kids too my my two boys so he one is 6 years old boy and the other one is 3 years old boy so you know they have got some traits of ours yeah they have got some ethics of ours probably our work nature how we balance our life you know how much time we are spending for our you know, for our family everything that is a lot i think so that is actually the intrinsic thing but you know i could i could spot out one point you know why this why this called intrinsic or why it is been there inbuilt in every people every man is that you know uh, you know i mean two years back i was uh, visiting uh, in the european country called italy yes i was there for around 15 days so i could realize that you know i could really see the harsh phase of uh, racism over there you know it's it's a real is it's a real fact you know even a, even a small kid a small italian kid he is having a mindset in his mind and he will be just you know he will be just uh, separating us he will be just uh, you know moving from us probably based on our caste creed color and he doesn't you know he so i think that that's quite the intrinsic uh, i think that the rectification of that particular thing is quite quite pretty hard since uh, you know we, we are we are ha- we are having that particular mindset in our you know inbuilt in our mind it's there already so it's it's quite difficult to you know move from that probably but we, we have got something you know if you are giving some international exposure if we are you know having some international friends probably if we are communicating with them yes of of course uh, if we can see some sea changes probably and second one is obviously the extrinsic values the extrinsic values are those values which uh, which actually you know which are actually getting from the surroundings probably from our school from our college uh, from our society obviously from our family family you know our uncles our aunts etc uh, so we will get to learn some good good human values you know that is actually based on training you know that is actually based on the exposure that we are getting in our society uh, so mixing this intrinsic extrinsic values of a person you know one can have some great set of human values probably which can uh, make one person a great human being i think uh, uh, you know you know nowadays it is not really uh, really happening in the schools as well as the college you know uh, when we were in when i was studying in my school days probably uh, they they used to give us uh, some sessions uh, not on religion or not on uh, you know morality and all but they will be just speaking about uh, the manners the etiquettes uh, uh, the code of conduct Uh, how to greet everyone you know how to deal with them you know what all are the things that that uh, you know that that should kept in your mind when you are speaking with a elderly person you know such things were you know were you know indicated to us and were taught to us and we were really practiced actually so i think uh, you know it is not actually the values but uh, a set of uh, code of context or uh, you know certain codes are being uh, you know inculcated to uh, the student's life so that he will be having a decision on that and he will be thinking on it and so you know for the time being probably till adolescence he will be sticking on to it and after that he will be having uh, he will be thinking about it and he will be you know thinking and thinking and he will come to a decision at the at the end probably you know that will be the best thing that can ever happen in a one in one's life so that is all about the intrinsic value so i would like to speak on the the in the different types of values too after that we will go on to the uh, move on to the discussion as well as the interaction with three people so it is quite theoretical the, the first one is uh, nothing but the individual values individual values actually reflect you know how to show up in your life you know what you know about yourself i think that is actually a part of self attainment uh, self actualization you know how much you know yourself yeah in fact self realization uh, so that it's a matter of fact or, or it, it is a need of the hour probably you know when you are considering you know i used to uh, tell students you know when you are introducing something you know if you are looking for a self introduction of a particular candidate who has applied for a interview probably he won't speak about himself for you know more than one minute or so he, he cannot uh, speak on ourselves you know he, he cannot speak about himself for you know more than one one minute probably one minute probably you know since uh, he, he 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 is not having that realization 
he's not having that self-realization. He doesn't have that self-actualization. He doesn't know what all in, in what all things he is really good at. What are the skills that he has? So I think <clears throat> this individual value is something like you know uh, similar to that. That actually defines a person's uh, enthusiasm, enthusiasm, one person's creativity, uh, probably his attitude, his uh, uh, the humility factor, probably the personal achievement, and a lot more. So how much uh, how much you value yourself? How much you value yourself? What what, what's important to you in your life? Is it uh, your career? Is it your money? Is it your parents? Or what would it be? You know, I was I, I would like to you know uh, share one point. Like you know, I mean, uh, I think last month Kerala has seen uh, you know, say continuously uh, in a particular in a particular area, you know, a number of girls probably married once were committing suicide one by one. You know, in a week itself, we could we could see that around ten or twelve got you know committed suicide in those days. So that was quite continuous and that was quite sequentially. You know, in a particular area around almost the same age group. You know, the reasons were also almost same. You know, most of them were domestic violence and uh, some dowry problems were there. So you know, continuously one person after another they were committing suicide. You know, we were, uh, we were, uh, you know, I, I got really frustrated since why is happening in a particular area and same age, same age group, and the third part is that the reason was also quite same. So what has happened? You know, what something has happened, right? So I was just, uh, you know, trying to Google it out. You know, I was just searching about what is this. Uh, it it is actually a phenomenon, probably. You know, sometimes you would be knowing that phenomenon. Uh, probably if you are from the sociology or uh, uh, you know uh, psychology area probably you will be knowing that that particular phenomenon is called suicide contagion suicide contagion you know the persons who are actually watching the news of a suicide probably as incident of suicide you know he is actually relating his life with uh, the, the you know with the diseased uh, person's life so he he finds a match with these two yeah, and he he's you know he is uh, he just thinks that he comes to a judgment that all right almost all the you know things is uh, can be rectified only by the death, so he is again committing suicide. So that particular term is actually known as suicide contagion. Suicide contagion. You know it is an international phenomenon. It is an international phenomenon. But still, you know our state or our district they were not able to find out uh, this particular. It is actually a psychological problem. It is actually a mob psychology problem. You know, we have to give them awareness. We have to give them counseling. If that's the thing, if if if, if we can really find out the persons who are really vulnerable to this particular contagion, yes, we have to give them some proper training, counseling, or you know, counseling sessions can really help them. Yes. So it is actually, you know, I I, I don't really want to connect it with academics, but it is of an academic interest probably. Yes, it is of academic interest. We have to work on it. Yeah. So, uh, so this is suicide contagion. But most of the persons, including our ministers, are not really aware of that that particular term, suicide contagion. So it has happened in our in our state. But unknowingly, you know, we are not sure that whether it is a suicide contagion or something like that. We have not conducted any sort of study. We don't have any academic interest. So we don't have any any particular uh, journal papers or any features uh, speaking about it. We don't have any system to, uh, you know, convince the people, vulnerable people. We don't have any system to give awareness, counseling at all. So I think it is much connected with the academics too. It has happened in UK. You know, suicide contagion extensively has happened in uh, UK as well as in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, around 23 persons, 23 girls of the same age, of the same district have committed suicide in Sri Lanka long back. Yes, you know, probably you might be knowing a person called the pop singer called, uh, you know, Merlin Mantro. After her death, a lot of persons, a lot of persons, her fans got committed suicide. That was also called the suicide contagion. I think uh, these things are happening because of lack of individual value. We are not valuing ourselves. Our kids are not valuing ourselves. They don't have self pride. I think. You know, if they really want to develop this self actualization, self realization, or this self pride. 
probably they should know what they are yes what they are what are skills they have you know how much worthy they are they, they should know their skills and they should have the self realization and actualization that we will be valuing us right that person particularly will be valuing them the most and uh, he will be you know love that you know you know loving ourselves is something really great right i think in the world i love myself the most <laughs> obviously so that's a fact right since i know me better than anyone else so i love me the most you know i value me the most so that's a thing so uh, so that 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 is a thing that should be uh, that should be you know you know uh, i mean went for you know that should be given for uh, studies research as well as uh, of academic interest so what type of story or what type of behavior makes you angry yes what type of behavior makes you really enthusiastic yeah when were you really the happiest one yeah what are you most proud of yeah whether your decisions are made based on the value element yes whether your decisions whether your career goal whether your life is moving uh, you know with adherence to the value element the value aspect all right so anyway so you know i don't want to really move on to you know such things all right in deep since we have a lot to speak on other things too all right so now <coughs> i would like to you know you know just uh, uh, put a discussion for you people to sorry put a discussion for you people to if if possible can you please uh, you know say whether you have since you are from the teaching background since you are from the academics you would have taught a number of uh, you know kids you would have you would have got some experience of around 20 to 30 years probably whether you have faced such a situation you know can anybody you know can anybody from the uh, from this particular group can share their views on this particular please come on. yes otherwise i will i will have to you know i will have to point one person probably uh, yeah you you yes somebody please come on yes anybody come on i i'm trying to make you make the session quite interactive and you can very very well turn on your mic and you can just speak on it and we, we can really have a healthy discussion on that yes charisma maria ma'am are you there charisma ma'am if you are there can you please turn on your mic <laughs> charisma ma'am i think she is not there <laughs> all right okay udaya ma'am come on udaya ma'am no Yes, Rajan sir, Doctor Rajan Kumar. Rajan sir, are you there? And now I think I will I will have to move on to H O D E E who has turned on his camera. Sir, are you there, sir? <laughs> In fact, yes. Alex sir, I think only his camera is turned on. <laughs> All right, fine. All right, sir. Thank you for the information. Thank you, sir. Uh, All right. He is there. He is there. I think his audio is. Ah, uh... uh, yeah, yeah. Switch off. I think. All right, sir. I will continue the session. That's fine. It's okay. No, sir. We must uh, get. Uh, <laughs> uh, leaving actually. We must get some participants, now, sir. Yeah, okay, obviously. <laughs> uh, See, so yes. most participants are there who are quite interactive, sir. You can try with. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Charles Babu, sir. Charles, Charles Babu, sir. Yes, Renu sir has certified you as the best interactive person in the group. Come on, he used to be he used to be interactive. <laughs> I don't know whether you know sometimes he will be a, you know technology line of person. <laughs> All right, that's fine. All right, we will we will move on. Okay, yes. So I will I will I will share the screen again. yes so we were speaking about uh, the intrinsic inter values obviously the individual values and the next next one is nothing but relationship values the relationship value you know it reflects you know how you relate to other people in your life the trust factor yes the openness the caring mentality yes the generosity that you, you i mean we people put forward so companionship i think uh, when we are when we are speaking about companionship uh, that can be considered as a thermostat in your terms yeah i think thermostat is quite uh, familiar for you people so it is actually a thermostat of your relationship yes you know we will we will we can very well know how cold or how hot our relations are really 
So I think uh, without friendship in your relation, probably it's, it will be difficult to know how healthy the relationship is. So companionship is is quite necessary. So I will I can I can spot a number of uh, you know other other values too. Yes, respect, the respect for others, empathy. Yes, empathy. Yeah, I will speak on that. Empathy is the ability to understand, share the feeling of others. It is not sympathy actually. It is empathy. This is deeper than simply having sympathy. Yes. Or obviously, the vulnerability. How vulnerable you are. Uh, how vulnerable uh, you are with others. You know. You know. Accountability. I think uh, since we are from a professional background, we, you know, sometimes we should uh, value this particular uh, you know point uh, the most. That is accountability. You know, uh, when when each student is actually you know studying in our college, when each student is our student, probably you know we have some accountability, and uh, uh, you know we are bound to give them the. The, the most uh, best thing that we can ever give them. All right, it is not enough uh, to just apologize for our behavior. Probably when 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 we are uh, you know uh, when we are uh, uh, when we are uh, finding some fault with ourselves or when we are uh, you know when we have done something wrong. Probably it, it is not enough to just apologize. Probably uh, we should go for some actions too. Yeah, uh, you know uh, you know it is it is equally important that uh, we, we understand the impact of our actions too. So that is the relationship value. Then, then comes the commitment. Commitment. How committed you are. You know how committed our kids are. You know how how committed our students are. The trust. You know, probably most of us will be having this an idea about the trust. You know, since we are leading a you know even a family life. Yes, the the trust matters a lot. Communication. How far you are good in uh, communicating with others. Yes. You know, then comes the organizational values. Organizational value. That includes really, I mean, before societal values, the organization value. That includes really the interpersonal skills that really have to follow while we are in a team. That, you know, teamwork matters a lot. Productivity, the growth, the growth of our entire team. You know, strategic alliances, you know, when, where, how to, how to deal the situation, how to deal uh, a crisis situation, how to handle the person, how to manage people. Yes, such things should be also uh, kept in mind, obviously. So, uh, when we are imparting these kind of skills and or these kind of uh, values, probably you know we can also drive the students to that particular value system, and they can be even uh, good in uh, you know interpersonal skills. They will be able to you know interact with people properly. Unfortunately, we are not getting enough time to interact offline nowadays since we are uh, you know badly hit by you know COVID-19. So, so I think uh, you know immediately after this particular scenario, probably Probably we can, we should have some, uh, what is that, uh, we should have some troubleshooting, we should have some brainstorming sessions, uh, uh, brainstorming lectures, brainstorming dealings in order to, you know, in order to rectify the, 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 the effects or the impacts of the, of the COVID. And the last one is nothing but the societal values, you know, you know the, we, were speaking, we have spoken about it, that is the future generations, what all are the the, the awareness that we should be we should be able to give to others about the environment, the ecology, sustainability. You know, a lot can be uh, you know discussed on sustainable engineering and uh, since uh, you know you people are you know since uh, uh, you are actually uh, you know moving on to energy conservation era. Yes, uh, uh, probably this FTP itself is actually an example for that since uh, you people are dealing with an uh, electric vehicle. So we have got some uh, societal responsibility, we have got some, uh, uh, you know, some sustainable, sustainable engineering uh, method or some aspects are there in our mind. And we are actually moving for, we are quite environment conscious and uh, we have got some commitment towards the society. That's why we are taking part of, obviously we have got a number of sessions on that. So see how this technology can be even used for such kind of things. How a technology can be even used for, uh, you know, the contributions towards the society, you know, uh, how it can be used for uh, environment, uh, you know, development activities and uh, technological advancement. You know, I was just thinking about, you know, some of the activity, activities uh, in one of the colleges that is happening in connection with IEDC, that is uh, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Cell. Let's say during the time of flood in our state, in Kerala, you know, the engineering colleges were uh, were actively participating in almost all the activities, both, you know, direct activities were the indirect activities. Uh, you know, some colleges were uh, making some, uh, you know, applications, Android applications for, uh, you know, in order to, in order to, you know, you know, regulate, regulate uh, funds as well as in order to regulate the supply, supply of, uh, supply of goods and uh, other things uh, in, in different refugee campus. 
obviously. So, so such things, uh, you know, uh, such things were carried out by many of the engineering colleges in Kerala and probably in your state too. Yes, and other one is that uh, you know uh, some people were making some uh, you know cleaning agents, cleaning uh, material. They were preparing some cleaning elements, and some people were busy. Some chemistry labs in some academic some colleges were really busy with making uh, you know cleaning agents or uh, phenols. Uh, you know such things were uh, they were doing and i could i could know that one 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 college of kochi in iraq they, they have made use or they have coordinated almost around 150 or 200 students uh, got coordinated with each other and they have made around 500 power banks so that they can be supplied and they can be distributed in uh, the places where they don't have any you know you know power or electricity you know the thing is that you know when 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 we could when we people are doing such things probably uh, the thing is the happening is that you know we people are actually teaching the kids to value the society the most and they have got some environment conscience and they are getting some you know sustainable engineering factors in their mind and at the same time uh, they are knowing a technology after all you know he, he he can be an entrepreneur at the end of the things you know if he can uh, generate that particular you know he can make such things industrially probably he can he can start up with uh, you know in the, you know in an industry or uh, in an entrepreneurship or uh, or even a startup so such things could be uh, could be implemented uh, in every aspect i think uh, the professional bodies uh, that is been working in our colleges like ieee IEDC, uh, the, the professional groups, IET, you know, ISTD, etc. could be even used for a social cause even. You know, uh, how, you know, we should always think uh, about the fact that how we can connect uh, the technology with, uh, you know, the, the other part. So that, you know, a holistic approach will be there. Holistic approach will be there. Obviously, he will be learning uh, how to use the technology. He will be learning how to make things happen. But at the same time, he will be okay with, uh, you know, he will be ready with, uh, uh, you know, the, the compassion, generosity, and a lot of different values that, that we can really inculcate with them. So, so that's it's a matter of, uh, uh, you know, things that can be considered. So these are the things, these are the values that we are actually expecting from uh, all of our awards, all of our students probably. In individual values, relationship values, societal values, you know. Uh, so such things should be imparted. So how how we can impart such things? You know, what are the facts that, what are the measures or what are the, you know, the things that is happening in our, in our country uh, since, uh, you know, wh why, you know, who is actually, what are the factors uh, which are responsible for moral degradation among Indian youth, among Indian youth? First of all, uh, I cannot clearly say that there is a moral degradation. Probably, uh, I think they are really responsible. I must say, in an aspect, they are quite responsible. But at the same time, uh, probably we will have to drive them always to the right end so that you know they can be developed uh, to the next level. Yes. So you know, it is not actually termed. It should not be actually termed as a moral degradation. But you know, something is missing. I must say. Something is missing. Some uh, ethics values are uh, missing. Uh, they are really hardworking. They are really smart workers, uh, and uh, they are really responsible. I must say, they know how to earn money, and they how know to move around, and they uh, know how to communicate with each other without you know looking each other without directly communicating. They they know how to handle things easily. They have got some easy ways for everything. But something is missing. I must say, this value system, and uh, you know. I was, I was i don't know whether that will really affect your value system but uh, you know last month uh, we could uh, we could you know one movie was there uh, you know in, in our state that is one sara you know that 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 particular it, if you if we are getting some time you can very well if you have got some subtitle and all you can very well view that movie so that uh, so that you can judge your value system also and if you are showing that particular movie to uh, to your students probably they will have some inputs they will have some suggestions they will have some opinion probably then we will have uh, uh, then we will be probably getting an idea where they really stand or what what is their value system or uh, you know whether whether it is good or bad i don't you know i'm not really uh, into commenting it but you know we, we can very well assess their uh, you know assess their attitude towards the life attitude towards the family attitude towards the family orientation and all i don't know whether it is right or wrong whether it is actually a modern uh, this thing but we can very well measure their uh, their value system probably uh, so we, we will have a you know clear picture on 
on where they are going, where they are moving, whether they are on the right path or whether whether some improvisation should be there. Yes, of course. So the, the basic fact is that we should always have uh, an assessment. We should have a, always have a touch with them so that you know uh, we, we can measure them. We can measure the value system probably, measure their professional ethics. You know what all things are there in their mind probably. So that's the thing. So I, I have just pointed out uh, some of the causes for uh, you know in fact. I would not really love to uh, like to term it as a moral degradation, but you know, <laughs> you know, since it is a terminology, uh, we believe that something is happening. You know, we believe that some moral degradation is happening in the current generation. But in fact, uh, you know, it is not that lethal. It, it is not that really alarming. But in fact, I think some something has uh, somebody has uh, given some input or somebody has raised that. You know. Um, you won't be knowing, you know, when I was taking, when I used to take sessions in colleges and all, I, you know, I, I used to tell them, come on guys, uh, please reply, come on guys, please interact. Uh, so that, you know, yes, Samshir Sheikh has raised her hand. Uh, Samshir, can, do you have any, anything to speak now? No. No, he's not there. All right. Yeah. Samshir, are you there? No, all right, fine. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, yes. yes sir. Yes. 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 Yeah, many are responding, sir. Oh, all right. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I was just, yes, uh, you know, yeah, Samshir, what's your opinion? Yes. You know, what do you have to ah. say? Nice, sir. Nice, sir. Very nice. All right. You know, what, what, do we have any input like that? Uh, you know, anything, anything more? You know, you really want to add something into it? No. <laughs> sir, you are uh, representing reality. All right. Okay, Samshir sir, where are you from actually? I am from Maharashtra sir. All right. So Pune. what is the system out there? Since we are not really familiar with uh, uh, the education system that is happening uh, in your state probably. If you if you can really give some input on that probably, uh, since it is a pan-India, uh, you know, faculty development program probably, uh, that would be a great help. Come on Samshir sir, please give your views uh, there. Uh, sir, actually, Covid situation when arise. Yeah. It's a new platform for teaching field. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. It's a tough time for us. Question was arise at that time. How to carry out this uh, teaching in future? Yes. Exactly. Because because uh, future of next generation is depend depend on us. Exactly. Ah. Uh, so meanwhile, yeah. uh, this new technology is new for us, and yeah. we are going to adapt it. Now it become. Uh, convenient for us and for the student also today exactly exactly so it is having its own disadvantages as well as advantages but still uh, you know you know uh, i mean different factors are laying on that so we will have to march towards uh, you know uh, a particular method so that it can be sustainable all right so okay. sir, thank okay. you very much thank for your you. opinion so thank you, anybody else who have got some unique thing or something uh, special uh, so that you know you really Asha, want to share. Asha ma'am. Asha ma'am. Ma Asha Shanjay ma'am, you were responding before. All right. Our HOD sir is also here. HOD W he is also there. Okay. Uh -huh. Sir? Oh, he is busy packing something. Yeah, okay, okay, why? Yes, sir. Sir, HOD, W, sir, can you hear? Sometimes uh, some of the faculties feel yes. uh, forget to unmute their mic. Balas uh, Balas sir. Balas sir. Balas sir. Balas sir, please unmute your mic. I think he ran away. Balas sir, please unmute your mic. <laughs> All right. Okay, fine. <laughs> anyway, Bala uh, Subramanian has left the meeting. Anyway, <laughs> that's fine. All right. Oh, we will catch him when he, you know, return back. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. It's all, you know, just kidding. So, uh, you know, what about the, the causes for moral degradation? So, it is not actually, you know, a comprehensive thing, but um, I think I think we can discuss these points too. Uh, since uh, it is a need of the hour. 
you know, the first point and the foremost thing is nothing but the parental behavior. <laughs> Since, uh, you know, I, I used to, when, when, we, when we communicate with our kids probably, uh, I think always they are uh, our photocopies. Yes, they are our photocopies, just our copies. Yes, sometimes uh, the words that we utter, the, the attitude that we have, everything they have, uh, you know, I mean, they are just, just the copy of us probably. Uh, so you know parents play an important and dynamic role probably in the personality development of the of the children exactly the personality the character the empathy the ethics the sincerity factor the moral values obviously the orientation towards uh, religion you know uh, not only religion the orientation towards the society the commitment towards the society the aesthetic sense you know a lot more so uh, you know uh, working parents are there uh, you know non-working parents are there you know we will have to deal them uh, in such a way that they are moving on to the right path. Sometimes the problem is that nowadays, even though the parents are working or not, probably the children are having an autonom autonomous life, I must say. They, they are quite free. So just as, uh, you know, like uh, we said before, the major f fact is that, you know, we should always, I mean, give them freedom probably. We should always, uh, you know, let them roam around, move around. We should let them travel. Uh, you know, we should uh, let them mingle with every type of people, probably. But you know, they should be they should be given enough input so that they can deal all these situations in, with much ease, probably. You know, uh, so uh, you know, the, the 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 thing is that when we are giving much freedom, you know, the, the other part should be also rectified. The other other input should be also given to uh, these groups so that they can really have a, a decision of their own. Uh, and uh, the the next uh, say main point I would like to uh, you know point out is nothing but the influence of peer group it's a, it's a really a you know the thing that is uh, happening all these days you know you know peer pressure peer pressure you know probably you would have heard about a particular term called herd mentality herd mentality that is h-e-r-d mentality you know uh, we could uh, probably you know i don't know about your state or your university probably the thing is that in kerala the situation is quite bad for engineering graduates, you know, not, not for engineering graduates probably, but for the engineering admission. You know, when I was studying, I was doing my BTEC and MTEC, that there was a huge demand for, <coughs> sorry, there was a huge demand for uh, <coughs> the, the different, uh, you know, engineering subjects those days. You know, that was, you know, uh, and opportunities were there. And still, nowadays also opportunities are there, but there was there was a huge demand those days in 2005, 2008, 2009, and all. And after that, you know, from 2013 onwards, uh, the situation has uh, gone down. The demand uh, of for engineering has uh, deteriorated really, you know, you know, very badly. I don't know about your state or your university, but the things are really bad, you know, nowadays. And then recession came, and after that, you know now uh, you know it is it is again a cyclic process now when probably we are expecting in in 2022 or 23 probably uh, you know that uh, that good time will again will be coming back to the academics so the the major problem i could identify is that it is actually a mob psychology it is actually a mob psychology you know if one of my friends is actually moving for mechanical engineering or electronics and communication engineering probably he will he will you know his friends a number of friends will be also joining him you know you know they will be, you know they will be moving uh, as a you know as a mob and they will be uh, you know uh, getting their particular degree and they will be moving back so that, that this is happening you know once it was nursing once it was nursing you know after that it was the commerce based subjects bcom and related subjects now we have got and this year we have got tremendous uh, demand for computer science and it engineering uh, you know courses i don't know why i don't know why you know uh, something you know uh, you know not much things have happened in that particular area but still there is a huge demand i think this is because of the herd mentality or the mob mentality probably nowadays this is you know it is quite uh, you know it is quite reality that the mechanical engineering and uh, civil engineering have are getting very, very less number of admissions 
so so it is actually it is not actually based on the facts or figures it is not actually based on uh, the real scenario real uh, reality you know we don't really know what will happen in the next four, four years probably you know you know i was i was really it, it, it is not really funny but i could i could find some uh, heavy uh, requirement or demand for uh, what is a nursing related courses these days that is only because of uh, uh, the COVID-19, you know, so, uh, you know, people are predicting that all right. Yes. So now we have got a huge demand for nurses, huge demand for health workers, probably. So they have matched everything. You know, they were thinking that probably at the end of the four, four years, probably this demand will be there so that they are uh, joining for such courses. So how, how, uh, you know, this is actually a herd mentality. This is actually from peer pressure, I must say. You know, when we are considering, you know, in, in Kerala, we could see that, uh, uh, you know, we have got the societies, we have got uh, residence associations, we have got family unions, we have got family clubs and all. So everyone will be inquiring about, uh, you know, what you are going to do, uh, you know, what's your status, what your, you know, what will be your career goal, everything they are discussing actually. So they have got some unified decision, you know, that decision actually should depend on the skill set of that particular person. If a person is really good in, uh, you know, teaching, he should be a teacher. If a person is really good in, you know, mechanical type of thing, he should be a mechanical engineer. You know, he if he's really good in selling, he should he should be a salesman, right? If he's really good in, uh, you know, you know, managing pre people, probably he should be a manager. Then he should go for MBA. Yeah. If he if a person is having some mentality for service, obviously he should go for some health work. You know, if a person is actually really good in uh, circuits or uh, circuit designing or, uh, you know, electric, uh, electrical kind of things, yes, obviously his cup of tea is nothing but electrical engineering. So such kind of uh, these things is not happening. I think uh, a major share go for this peer pressure, peer pressure. We are not getting the real, we are not getting the reality from this uh, uh, pressure. The members of this group, uh, uh, you know, probably they are, uh, you know, likely to influence other persons too. You know, they will be deviated. You know, they, they won't be moving for a uh, for a course which really complements their skills. Yes, I, I, I know. I used to think always. I used to think always when when we are dealing when when the students came come here for uh, you know admissions and all. I could I could see that last day one boy came here. I mean. I'm in electronics and communication engineering. So one boy came and uh, he was, you know, I was having a counseling session with him. So he was actually telling, you know, I asked him, what do you want to become? What do you want to become? So he was telling me, you know, so I, I would like to become a computer science engineer. Uh, so next question was, why do you want to become a you know, computer science engineer? So he was telling that, sir, I would like to become a software engineer or IT engineer, you know, information tech. I, I really want to move to IT. Uh, the next question was that uh, I asked him, what was your main subjects in plus two? So he told me that, you know, sir, it was actually biomax. He hasn't studied the uh, computer science field. And the next question was that, you know, why you want to become a software engineer? Why you want to work in an IT sector? So his answer was quite curious. It was quite funny too. He was telling me that, sir, uh, none of the other areas or none of the other jobs are uh, will be giving me a chance to go abroad for on-site projects. So what a pathetic situation. So, you know, I, I, I told him, you know, uh, what all are the things that you really, you know, <clears throat> so I, I have told him what all the skill set that is needed for, uh, you know, uh, you know, getting a job in IT sector. So he was telling me, uh, sir, uh, you know, I told him that coding is a inevitable thing, a, you know, logical skill in coding. But he, he doesn't know even a language. He doesn't have any sort of you know coding skill. But he's having he's having moving towards uh, uh, this IT sector and computer science engineer. So what is his skill set? We don't know his skill set probably, but we will have to find it out. Probably, uh, I mean, if we, if we are getting a, some some more time, if we if we can communicate with them, probably we will be knowing his skill set, and we can really uh, you know orient uh, his studies towards that particular point. So ov obviously. A, a set of skill set will be there in each one's life and he should get a course which really complements that skill set yes and immediately after that the degree if you really want to divert to some other field all right he can go go with that 
Yeah, the engineering education is actually giving a lot of freedom for that. Minor subjects are there. He can he can take a number of uh, what is that certification courses, workshop. Obviously, he can move on to some other diversions. But if he really want to move on with uh, a particular area, probably he can move on with. So such, such kinds of such kind of uh, happenings are uh, you know disturbing this generation. Obviously, the peer pressure. So uh, I think it is having a vital role in, uh, you know, you know, developing the concept of morality. The students of the colleges, the schools, you know, they spend time with each other, with themselves, uh, not for creative thing, and they speak really frankly. Yes, they they won't have any inhibition. They speak really fr frankly. So uh, the other uh, the problem is that the sexual knowledge, uh, the, the 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 knowledge regarding the. Uh, the sex or the knowledge regarding the other other things are uh, i think that is misinterpreted they are misinterpreted you know they are not in the right track proper sex the proper you know proper sexual education so we are not able to give proper sex education so they have got some uh, some what is that a wrong mindset in their mind so that is that, that's the thing I, I think that is a major thing uh, uh, that leads to some rape some molestation and all I think you know the proper input should be fed to them from proper hands, not from priests, probably. So you know, you know, you know aptly we should give. So I think that can be that can be uh, done using this uh, uh, by by inculcating or imparting this value system. So that's another point. That is uh, the peer pressure. Yeah, uh, you know, I haven't seen a group, you know, uh, yes, obviously some studious students, uh, uh, I mean, collaborate each other so that they will be, you know, having some good time to develop some circuits or something like that. But I haven't seen uh, a number of people doing such things, you know, they will be just chit chat, they will, they will just interact and they will just, you know, copy and share the movies and all. So I think that that value system can really, um, uh, you know, can help with this. So the next point is nothing but the influence of mass media. You know, I was explaining that particular point really, I know earlier that is regarding the suicide contagion. You know, I have seen in this COVID scenario itself how our media, how our media projected such kind of sad news with much, uh, you know, marketing element. I was, you know, I was just, uh, you know, getting frustrated uh, seeing all these things. You know, uh, in 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 our state, probably you are the safe zone. I mean, uh, the the uh, the states in the northern country. They, I mean, you all have uh, overcome. Uh, that particular curve probably still you know Kerala in our state we are we are still in trouble I must say so uh, we are actually trying to flatten the curve but still uh, you know yesterday itself we have got around a TPR of 15.67 we have got around uh, 20,000 plus I think not 20,000 approaching 20,000 around 19 or 18,000 uh, you know uh, who has really got affected with COVID-19 but you know what kind of news they are propagating through the media you know they are of course, they are speaking the reality, but you know, uh, you know, many of them, many of the affected persons are in, uh, you know, you know, mental trauma, and they are under fear. Uh, you know, they are under, you know, you know, they are under fear of death even. Yes, but but we are showing the graveyards. We are showing the persons. We are showing the 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 patients who are uh, wandering for oxygen supply. We are showing, you know, the media are showing the person who are, you know, you know moving to death so so you know what kind of things are we obviously it's a sort of counseling or obviously uh, you know we should be always should be compassionate with uh, the affected persons and we should lift them up so that they will be mentally strong and what 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 our mass media is doing you know i, I have got i think uh, some revolutionary change has happened in uh, you know mass media you know this thing uh, copying the the European media and all. I think we are crossing the limits uh, when we are considering some particular channels in our in our country. So it's it's a really a bad thing. You know, it is having a negative influence on the society. Uh, you know, by causing people to act violently as what they observe in the media. So they are copying everything. I must say, uh, they are even copying the movies. They are even copying the movies. So we we think that you know, you know. But the movies are really playing a role in one's life. Yes, in fact, it is happening. You know, some people who, who doesn't have 
you know a sort of self identity or an individual value probably he will be also copying the same he will be having a you know you know fan base and yeah, fan base and all there is there right? so such things is happening so young, younger people you know they don't really work to know ourselves no one self you know they really want to copy others so in such things the mass media is having a big role in uh, you know you know these things you know happening in this all right so that's the other point then comes the education system education system i don't uh, i don't i won't say that education system is uh, a trouble free environment uh, you know we cannot really say that um, you know education system is quite perfect in our country you know i i really found uh, some gaps in between you know it is not at all unified it is not at all unified so we have got cbses we have got icses and we have got state syllabi and we have tamil medium we have other mediums and malayalam medium even yeah but all these are ranked in a particular uh, you know in a based on a particular parameter and they are they are moving to so what is happening it is not actually unified it is not it, it is a non unified system but i think it should be unified we have got a number of committees uh, you know in uh, late of uh, uh, you know 80s probably we would have got you know i mean not 80s in 60s i have we have got kothari commission he has proposed a lot of things but it has not come into implementation probably when we are uh, uh, when we are considering the new education policy uh, that has happened in 1986 they have got a number of proposals they were really good i must say you know the the new education policy that has uh, proposed in 1986 was also really great but uh, how how far we have achieved the, their proposals it's a matter of concern and now we are moving on to a 2020 policy that is the uh, the education policy of 2020 so you know we should always have an analysis of how far we have achieved in uh, the the education policy that that we have proposed in in 1986 around 20 30 years back we have done that so the the major thing is that the main aims of the education institutions are to modify uh probably improve and the strength uh, the beliefs ideas and behavior of the candidates but nowadays it, it is not like that probably sad to say that nowadays it is it is actually an exam center in, in, in you know i'm not uh, you know generalizing the particular point but it is happening in many of the uh, you know colleges or schools they are actually uh, you know training these kids for uh, you know marks and exams only so you know uh, teachers have also failed Uh, in their responsibility in, in some aspect i must say uh, especially in the case of uh, covid 19 scenario obviously we have done a great job obviously the teachers have adapted the situation but still some shortfalls are there some shortfalls are there but obviously the system is uh, the system is not up to the mark but still uh, we could have done something more i think so uh, you know self analysis i must say that it's a self you know self analysis uh, that's the thing that i was actually trying to speak to you so our schools and colleges have have become you know exam centers uh, it is not actually industry ready so when we are considering the engineering coded courses or engineering syllabus that is been put forward by uh, majority of the universities of our country probably some some uh, syllabus syllabi is not actually uh in coordination in coordination with the industry requirements i must say unfortunately that's that's a really really a fact of almost uh so i think that it could be made better i think it could be made better. industry uh, industry relation should be increased probably so that such instances accreditations uh, uh you know technology uh is also not not, not unified you know we have got still uh, you know i will i will later on this session i will give you a uh, give you an analysis uh, all those i mean i mean international analysis on uh, the computer knowledge as well as the internet internet facility internet uh, you know access you know attainment and all so that's a, that a real factor so it's is here the education system then comes the identity crisis yes we have uh, we have spoken on that Uh, we have uh, spoken on uh, the self realization we have spoken on uh, th this uh, you know self realization self actualization and uh, how far we know ourselves and all so that is the identity crisis then comes the economic change yes we are badly hit by economic economy yes of course after the after the post covid scenario we will be we will be having a tough time 
uh, in order to you know mitigate the problems that we are, we are facing these days i don't know how long it will be there uh, you know uh, we really want our kids to be in our college you know you know i am I, I you you know i am really bad in need of taking a physical session you know in a classroom session so it's really sad to see that uh, students are sitting in front of uh, the camera in, in front of uh, you know a mobile or so it's really bad you know of hopefully hopefully you know it would change properly so then comes the gender bias so you know still uh, we always rule out this thing gender bias but it is happening it is happening in our uh, in our you know very urban uh, you know places too in our in our state too it is happening gender bias you know in one of my my wife's friends family you know uh, she she and a, a girl and a boy was there and she was really fantastic in his academics and uh, you know the boy he was not really good in academics but they have spent a lot of money for the education for the boy and they have sent the, this particular girl for a you know a short term course so that they can get a job and she has started earning money and she really wanted to learn a lot but fact actually it's it it is really happening in our family too i would say yes we, we are annoyingly we are uh, annoyingly it, it is happening in our in our family too so gender biasing gender biasing it's also happening so that's a, that's a thing that is happening all right so what are the challenges that is uh, faced by education sector in covid scenario you all know that you are facing that you all are experiencing these things each day yes but in fact we will uh, we will we will try to uh, move on to some other points we will we will, we will try to dig up uh, some more uh, you know you know different challenges that we are facing so this the, the, the main thing is that distance learning will reinforce teaching and learning approaches that we know do not work well <laughs> obviously uh, it won't really work well we all know that but we are actually you know taking it in the positive sense and we are uh, marching uh, towards uh, you know some accomplishments we don't have any other go other than, other than this that's a real fact we don't have any other way other than this so that's why we are promoting this obviously but in between us we know that it is not up to the mark the students are not able to not able to communicate with each other they are they are not able to collaborate with each other you know they are not able to socialize with each other so that that's a real fact so i think many countries are uh, you know shifting to distance learning approaches now we have got digital universities here you know i think ugc is actually uh, trying to give some approval for digital universities for distance learning as well as for online education i mean giving priority for uh, you know online uh, you know education so that's happening so i think you know there are real risk when you are considering the the teaching learning process you know even though we are speaking about augmented reality we are speaking about virtual reality artificial intelligence proctoring and all but still we have youtube we have zoom we have google meet but uh, the real the real thing is actually missing you know they are not able to socialize with each other they are not communicating they you know the interpersonal skills are not getting developed so it's a, it's a sad reality i must say all right so it it actually you know caters the minimum requirements yes but i think it it really no it does not serves uh, i mean everybody in the best way uh, you know i mean so that's that's a scenario all right the second point is nothing but uh, educators as i think somebody's uh, you know mic has turned on annoyingly could you please turn it off all right thank you see uh, the the major other fact is that educators will be overwhelmed and unsupported to do their jobs so see the thing is that you know our, our you know, the, the political scenario or our the economic scenario is not actually helping us in the best way uh, you know most of the colleges don't have i mean most of the schools don't have even a, a, a computer in in some remote areas or in some rural areas they don't have even a computer so how can they think about an online class you know the students are from really bad i mean bad background but still we are finding it very difficult to you know, yes so so such things are happening so you know educators uh, you know they are quite unsupported and probably they are not given proper or needed training uh, to deal with uh, the online education system 
you know how to act how to how to move around how to you know what should be the background of your screen how to how to tease them how to engage them what all are the tools that can be used in order to you know uh, do a particular uh, you know fantastic lecturing and all so such things such i think some unified training should be given for all the institutions all the faculty members uh, so that they can they, we can move in a unified manner we can move in a unified manner i think some uh, some financial aid or some budgeting should be there uh, should be given for the development of the organizations as well as the institutions as well as uh, the the community so the, the third point is the protection and safety of children will be harder to safeguard yes obviously we are losing our data yes we are losing our data since uh, you know a lot of happenings are there uh, you know in our country with regard in connection with the uh, online education you know the the students are given freedom to use uh, a mobile phone uh, uh, a tab or a laptop probably and he is uh, he is using it with utmost freedom but we are not able to our technology you know proper technologies are not there to monitor them no, i mean not to regulate them you know what all things should be not to them what all things should be restricted to them so such things uh, you know we will we should have a you know good plan for the same you know uh, school closures will, will widen the equity gaps obviously i don't have to explain that particular point poor experience with edu tech during the pandemic will make it harder to get buy later for good use of edu tech so see it's a, it's a matter it's a matter of fact you know it's a it's a big big thing that we will have to discuss so it won't be a you know big thing for us probably for engineering background it not be a, you know big thing since uh, we are familiar with computers we are familiar with uh, laptops everything is fine but what what is happening in the school uh, school section what is happening in the higher education you know what about the secondary education what are, you know uh, you know uh, they are not the teachers are not being given proper sometimes proper training in uh, you know digital uh, you know technologies so see the the in syllabus it is not there in syllabus it is not there so one of my you know uh, you know one of my friends is actually doing a course in uh, dl diploma in elementary education that is teachers training course that course is actually meant for uh, you know primary education you know primary teachers for the selection of primary teachers you know i was just analyzing their syllabus i was just analyzing the syllabus that has been put forward by diet i mean the, the kerala state government so i could see that uh, they have got very less computer related you know topics in there you know, they they are just speaking about uh, the input devices and the output devices and not even uh, video editing you know nowadays it is a you know it, it is a need of the hour yes i think uh, proper training should be given for given for primary teachers as well as secondary teachers on educational tools specifically otherwise the problem is that <coughs> the private education tools will come into existence and they will be uh, they will be conquering the whole uh, the scenario and they will be making the money and that's it sometimes since the, the problem of equality again exists there so i think this edutech edutech should be given prime importance since uh, you know uh, you know i can i can uh, you know uh, you know speak on that with firm uh, words since uh, i am also doing my research in augmented reality and virtual reality that is actually based uh, uh, i mean that is for you know that is for uh, you know teaching learning process so when we are analyzing each data you know I, I, you know i have done some analyze analysis too so when when i was analyzing these data when it is coming to educate the situation is quite pathetic i must say situation is quite pathetic you know they you know teachers teach community are not you know not not the colleges obviously but the primary as well as the secondary school education teachers they uh, they found it very difficult to cope up with microsoft excel microsoft word even microsoft ppt you know uh, microsoft pp i mean powerpoint presentation and uh, uh, you know we cannot just think about augmented reality and virtual reality happening there and uh, how many of the colleges in kerala or, or our country are using proctoring for writing the exams writing the exam fortunately i am doing my phd research in karuni university and i have done my uh, mini test i mean uh, done my these things what is that uh, test and all you know course test and all that is through proctoring 
that was quite online but you know proper measuring things will be there and uh, when whenever we i am moving so we are under surveillance obviously we are, we will have to turn on the camera and we will have to you know look at the camera and uh, we have to give answers orally as well as we have to type the answers we cannot take another browser so such things are really lacking up in, in our i think that should be given to almost all the all the you know places probably so so these are the challenges that we are uh, facing right now so i would like to explain one more things you know some of the other challenges so so what could be done i was saying what could be done uh, in order to rectify these issues so when when we are speaking about the challenges we have spoken about the 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 rectification measures also but we can have a structured uh, style of presentation right now so what could be done in order to rectify the issues around 185 million all over the world probably kids are, have lost their you know education they have lost their education probably they are they are finding it very difficult to cope up the situation and it is quite alarming so we don't have any clear cut idea or proposal to overcome the situation but since it is a global challenge we have got some global solutions for the same we have got some approaches to the, to the same which which were really proven which were really proven all of a sudden we went for lockdown we went for uh, you know online education but our technology were not really supporting the in fact our technology were not really up to the mark in order to pop up with the situation so it's it's really global challenge so when i was reading a, an article that was uh, put forward by unesco unesco considering almost all the all the countries of the world you know they have uh, given an analysis uh, uh, you know uh, you know getting the data from almost all the countries like uh, almost all the countries almost all the continents europe asia you know africa etc you know you know this is the the real fact is that i have i have just got alarmed with uh, a particular analysis they have put forward that is 11 percentage of sub saharan africa 11 percentage of sub saharan africa you know they don't have a household computer they don't have a single computer at their home you know they just 11 per sorry the 11 person they just have a household computer trust around 89 they don't have an access to computer and uh, the the other alarming figure is that around 18 person they only have this internet facility so i doubt that it is in that 11 percentage only 18 percentage will be having that you know internet facility facility so it is quite alarming it is quite alarming it is against the average of 50 percentage overall the global average is 50 50 50 for computers and 50 percentage for internet but still 50 is comparatively a bit less 50 is comparatively less and were this 11 percentage and 18 percentage likes it's quite alarming see we have got systems even though it is a it is a global input we don't have our own space on this but we still have uh, you know ar vr and all so we have to always march towards that since you know now uh, you know you know i i am i am actually speaking to you and my other department mates our uh, my different faculty members of our department is actually attending a workshop on tinkercad tinkercad so the the fact is that Uh, you know we we don't have an option to conduct offline lab sessions you know we have got s5 and s7 and s3 these days so they have got communication lab they have got circuits lab and i think they have got some vlsi lab very long lab and all so you know you know you know we cannot really call them to college and conduct offline sessions so we are actually learning you know from one two faculty members from different colleges are taking sessions on tinker canada and uh, so collaboration you know i mean those are my friends and they are taking sessions uh, in my college and uh, you know my my faculty members are learning that particular tool so that probably by next week we will be arranging an online training session for uh, our kids too our 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 students too so this is the fact this this collaboration should be done in uh, in in what is that in the effective way yeah in a big push up course in a big push up course we have to we have to do it uh, you know immediately so we cannot really return to the world as it was before obviously you know the <coughs> different educational bodies international bodies as well as the ugs uh, ugs are actually even thinking about uh, conducting flipped classroom method flipped 
FI, FLI PPED, flipped classroom methods. The, the real fact is that flipped means, you know, they will be contacting online sessions as well as offline sessions. You know, they will be, they will be bringing all these students to the college or, uh, I mean, the department, I mean, the, the classrooms and uh, they'll be conducting the sessions and probably after that, uh, we'll be giving the, them some online sessions on that. So that's happening. So it's, it's actually flipped learning. So flipped learning is there and, uh, you know, Udemy and Coursera, we will have to conduct a number of, you know, still there are some positive aspects. You know, I could see that when we are considering the uh, Udemy or Coursera online education platform, uh, we could really see that they have slashed their prices and many of our engineering graduates in third year as well as the second year, they have uh, undergone a number of certification courses in very less amount, I must say. You know, probably they, they, you know, they used to charge around 9,000 or 10,000 for whatever particular course uh, normally, but nowadays they are just charging uh, just 2000 or 3000 and uh, they're conducting a lot of certification programs uh, these days so it is still positive i think uh, uh, almost many of the many of the teachers or faculty members have uh, got some connection with the digital pl platforms obviously so that is also happening all right so <clears throat> the first point is that strengthened public commitment yes strengthened public co commitment to education as a common good so I really doubted, you know, whether we could really connect the, uh, the public education with the public health. In fact, we can really connect the, the public education with the public health. You know, you know the, the situation demanded that. So the thing is that nowadays we could, we could really realize that the public education is actually depending on our public health. You know, such a great, great deal, I think. You know, public health, it is much dependent, uh, uh, I mean, public education is much dependent on public health. You know, we were not having an idea about this, you know, this connection, I must say. These two things go hand in hand. They, they are undeniable. They are inseparable, I must say. You know, you know, some, something is happening. So, uh, these things, this 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 public health, I must due importance should be given in education too. I think uh, I I think that can be that can be done. Since I was just uh, when I was reading this, I was just thinking about the country Japan, Japan. You know, uh, Japan really overcame uh, the situation of COVID-19. They were really good in uh, handling COVID. The the major fact is that uh, one of my friends is actually working in Japan, so uh, she used to tell us that you know. That won't really, this COVID-19 won't really affect our, our country since the, the fact is that, you know, they are used with sanitizers as well as masks, face masks. You know, when they are in the public transport or, uh, uh, you know, when they are in, uh, you know, when they are in, uh, you know, railway or when they are in trains or uh, when they are outside, probably they used to wear these face masks. They used to wear these face masks. They used to have, uh, you know, sanitizers with, with them. They used to have the social distancing already. So it was not a big deal for them to handle this particular situation, COVID-19 situation. So such kind of health culture or health aspect should be imparted uh, in our education system so that, uh, so that uh, you know, we, will, we, won't, we won't be having a, a you know, similar situation later in our, in, our, in our future. So health sector should have an active participation in school, colleges as well as. So, you know, students to be sh should be given proper input on uh, the mental health, the, the the physical health, the need for the exercise, the sports activity should be given due important. You know, such kind of things should be uh, done with them. I think related activities can be done in in yoga too. You know, yoga activities also could be done. I think uh, you know the the active participation of the health sector should be the in the education system, so in education sector, since uh, we could really realize that these two things go hand in hand they are mutually dependent so that's a fact really all right the second point is nothing but the importance of teaching profession and teaching collaboration teacher collaborations obviously we are of a number of around 100 we are attending around 100 faculty members of different colleges of our country are attending a particular session but uh, i always think about uh, you know customizing this faculty development just like you know, we should have uh, an interactive session so that we would know each other. 
Yes, sometimes uh, one person of uh, this particular group would be doing, would have done, would have completed an electric vehicle, uh, what is that, project or research. Probably one person will be, you know, in search of some data, in search of some te technology. Probably this is actually a knowledge hub, right? So since uh, around 100 faculty members from all over the all all over the country is actually you know you know getting in touch uh, in a particular platform and we are speaking to one another and I think some uh, you know if, if if it was offline probably that would have been done but still even though it is in offline if even if it is in online I always uh, uh, you know suggest an idea that just. Uh, just have the database, you know, everyone just uh, fill your, you know, <coughs> probably you can very well, you know, fill your phone number or your research interests, research areas, what about your status, you know, such things. If if you are uh, building into a team, probably, uh, you know, probably you can uh, communicate with each other when sometimes when in the case of research or sometimes in the case of uh, admissions or sometimes in the case of accreditation NB accreditation NAC accreditation you can really collaborate with each other so it will be a build it will be a community like thing you know you can you can interact with each other sometimes uh, uh, sometimes you can visit their labs probably you can go uh, to that concerts person's uh, institute and you can work in the lab sometimes you can invite resource persons uh, from this probably from this group you know such things could be done i think so proper collaboration i think this collaboration is actually happening in uh, higher education sector but it is not really it is totally ignored in school education i must say they don't have any connection with each other they don't have any knowledge exchange program they don't have any cultural exchange program they don't have any you know educational technology exchange programs at all i think that could be worked out easily since uh, you know for five days you are you are just being like in a family you are interacting with each other you are listening the you know sessions you are you know you you will have to write some exam probably at the end of the sessions probably you will have to write the exam uh, in the online scenario so why don't we have a database why don't we why don't we have a, a why don't we socialize with each other so that we, we would be able to know each other in the best way so it's a it's a, it's a thing that I'm, I'm trying to put forward so uh, you know, firstly, you know, uh, you know, the, the thing is that in order to inculcate uh, this uh, faculty collaboration, probably it should be divided into clusters. Obviously, in the school education, it should be done, and a knowledge sharing program should be conducted. And uh, obviously, the the pandemic has revealed the capacity of the teaching community. You know how far they have adapted the thing. You know, I, I have got really wondered. You know. Uh, many uh, you know many school teachers who are really aged and who are really reluctant uh, with uh, uh, you know digital technology platforms they have they have you know they have come a long way uh, and they are now working with augmented reality and virtual reality in order to uh, teach the student they know how to communicate through you know online also so, so something you know some magic has happened but still there are some space to uh, develop and uh, improve, improve obviously so uh, you know how far uh, you know you are good in presentation skills you know some sessions should be carried out you know, uh, you know such things could be done so proper collaboration can really uh, help the situation and uh, the, the foremost point is nothing but free and open source technology for teachers and students you know that should be made free i must say that should be made free in all aspects internationally that should be made free a knowledge sharing platform should be there in order to share the education technology the things the journals the conferences papers and everything so that should be done so you know uh, you know obviously some platforms are uh, coming to existence and they are they are giving free training and they are giving free uh, certification programs in very less amount but still you know some something can be done in the case of in the case of knowledge sharing as well as, uh, as well as the research uh, you know progress so uh, digital libraries we have we will have to fix some we will have to develop some digital libraries and we make sure that uh, uh, the digital platforms from education should be con should not be controlled by the private private sectors obviously they should not control this thing you know i was i was just uh, you know observing the growth of uh, what is that growth of online tutoring apps these years these years i mean due to the due, due to the emergence of this pandemic after this particular emergence you know uh, in every almost all the big giants have started some tutoring apps including 
Baijus, they have got you know enormous number, a number of companies uh, you know have started their uh, diversions into uh, this thing, you know, uh, online tutoring apps and online you know learning teaching apps and all. So it it is a thing that is being controlled by the private sector nowadays. So why don't we make why don't we why don't the universities can make uh, such an app? Why don't the you know CBSEs or why don't uh, you know the boards could make such a such an app so that uh, probably some of them ha are having such apps some of them are having some uh, you know digital library system they have got some good good things but it is not up to the pace i must say it is not uh, you know moving in a pace as as it is moving with the you know private sector probably so i think i think that that kind of thing should be done i was just wondering when you know last month when i was uh, uh, you know attending an fdp uh, that was in actually augmented reality and virtual reality i could i could hear a session that was actually in, I, i'm not remembering the resource person's name but it was actually from nit suratkal i think nit karnataka suratkal yeah nit karnataka you know one one professor uh, i am not remembering his name probably dr gangadhar or something you know he's, he he is a kerala and he was just showing us a, a tool uh, the, the tool is something like you know you can very well see that particular tool in nit suraj kal uh, site site so the thing is that they have made a number of uh, virtual labs number of virtual labs almost all the premium uh, uh, premium institutions in our country that is iit madras iit bombay everyone every good uh, institutions in our country have uh, generated or have designed a particular uh, you know particular virtual virtual labs i must say you, you can very well select your uh, you know app if you if you really want to select uh, uh, what is that if you really want to select the virtual lab of particular what is that what is electronic circuits probably you can very well see that it is not really interactive but you know they are giving a real time uh, you know picture and real time virtual experience for all the students so that you know i think i think the 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 you can also you know avail that service uh, if you have got some mou with that particular you know organization i mean particular institution probably you will be also having the right to use that particular uh, what is that virtual lab concept so you know it is really great you know within a short period of within a short span of time they have made everything possible i think such kind of thing should be uh, given in root level almost that should be uh, given to almost all the colleges even the arts colleges schools colleges etc so such kind of developments could be done in, in that aspects and obviously uh, the the problem of socialization the students are not getting you know in touch with each other they are, they are not interacting with each other that's a it's a matter of concern probably but still uh, uh, you know uh, i mean through some activities through some games through some apps through some quizzing probably we can cope up the situation uh, with much ease i must say so these are the things or uh, these are the things i you know i really wanted to share with you people uh, so that's all about uh, you know today's session so i was just moving on with uh, you know value system we were starting with we were uh, dealing with uh, sorry moving uh, with started with the value system and uh, how it has affected our community and uh, in what phase we are what phase we are actually going through and what all are the you know challenges that we are facing different different values and uh, Uh, we have spoken about some ground realities we have spoken on uh, the formation of student community and uh, uh, you know the 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 idea of flipped learning the idea of technology idea of education technology and uh, how we are going to cope up the situation even after after the covid when, you know you know we cannot move back uh, to the to the same world as it was really before but we can we can we are moving on to a new phase we are no, moving on to a new world probably there we have got new chances new opportunities new challenges even new challenges even you know it's quite wide so we will have to think about it and we, we should have a comprehensive educational package and educational method uh, you know comprising all these technologies all the aspects you know in order to in order to overcome the situation and to uh, to be uh, you know in tandem with global demands so that's all for the day thank you very much thank you venu sir thank you sir thank you now i request uh, any one of the participant kranti ma'am kranti ratan ma'am please come forward and give your feedback please ma'am kranti ma'am varalakshmi ma'am 
Varlakshmi Sarikonda. Varlakshmi Sarikonda, ma'am, please, sir. Can you please give your feedback? Ma'am, just like what I have mentioned uh, today morning, we all are faculties. Just like how we expect our students to respond, just like that Alex uh, is also expecting us to give him some response. So I request uh, some of the participants to give your feedback. Anyone, please. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yes, I think, uh, yes, it was very nice session and uh, very uh, practically, sir, whatever the sir has observed in his life and, and faced the problem, he has observed very uh, keenly and he gave the presentation and he addressed, I think, almost he touched all the things. So this is very wonderful session and this is uh, the feedback from my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. One more participant, uh, please. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, session sir, yeah. was quite. Yeah, yeah, sir. This, yeah, sir. Uh, Alex, sir, your lecture was straight from your heart. We all have been experiencing this this particular thing. Okay, and one thing I would like to talk about the peer pressure you talked about, and and the hungriness of students about the CSIT stream. Okay, I belong to the core stream of electrical engineering, and we are feeling this that. This CSIT hunger is eating out core stream. Okay, because all the students, top students, they are opting for CSIT just, just because mass recruiters are from CSIT. Okay, uh, so, so we all facing this particular issue and, uh, um, and the lecture was quite nice. Thank you. Alexa, please don't forget to share your presentation with me. All right, sure, I will. I will. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sir. So, so, sir, thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, you have, you all have listened well, I think. <laughs> you, even though you have not really responded, but uh, you have, uh, you know, listened well all these sessions. At least some of them, sir. At least some sure, of sure, them. Sure, sure. Yes. Obviously, obviously. Thanks a lot. For anyway, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks See a you lot. soon for our See next you. program. Thank you, sir. Thank you. See you, everyone. Have a question was. Sir, Sheikh, sir, do you have yes, to share with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Really yes. motivational session was there. I heartily appreciate to him. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir uh, because we are facing a lot of problems during COVID situation. Yes, exactly. Because his condition is new for teaching staff as well as student also. Because some of the student uh, staff members having age more than 55, and all these things are new for them to implement in their life. Exactly. So really, uh, your presentation was very good, sir. Thank you very much. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That is, in fact, a very logical point which uh, uh, exactly. Samshir Sheikh has mentioned. Yes. yes. Because uh, majority, so if some of the faculties might be about to retire or some of the faculties will be 50 plus. Yes. So, uh, during their entire career time, they have been using that uh, chalk and talk method uh, for teaching. Exactly. But now getting a uh, shift yes. to the uh, online system for them will be very difficult. At least for us, so it's it is quite it's difficult. Quite difficult. Exactly. Yeah, but at this age we are able to adapt to it. But yes. I don't know how they are managing. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, Alexa. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, so sir. Bye again. Stay safe. Stay safe. Okay, okay then. Okay. Okay. Bye. Yes, participants, I have shared the session's uh, attendance link. Uh, all of you may enter the attendance using the link. And uh, see you for tomorrow session. Tomorrow we will begin at 9 itself. Tomorrow we are having three technical sessions. One session, the first session is handled by Jitin from Tata LXI. He is actually currently working with the Land Rover uh, and uh, and in fact, Land Rover uh, and the Jaguar project. So he's a very good resource person. And for the third session, uh, we are having uh, Raj Kumar, who was uh, doing the simulation show today. And uh, for the second uh, session, we are having a person from Gujarat. Uh, he is Ather Patel, and he is from Tyrex Technologies. He is actually the CEO of Tyrex Technologies. So hope to see you all.
tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you.